God will strengthen you today. Amen. He will cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. He will meet you at the point of your need. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is the last Sunday. Praise God. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 4, it says, I will give men for your ransom. So, you see, perhaps the enemy has tried to take you. But God gave someone for your ransom. Praise God. They said someone must go. They said it's that one. And God says, no, I would rather give another for this one. You see, a lot of, a lot of things happen you think is just normal. Some people who died, died because... God took away death from you. He said, for your sake, I will kill kings. I will submount nations just for your sake. In the course of the month, many things have happened. The Bible gives us an understanding. It says the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't enter. But Jesus came so that you may have life. Praise God. If God is to open our eyes to see the battles that are fought on our behalf. You see, the, mo the, when, the one I think about the most is when I sleep. I'm as vulnerable as anything. But God sends his angels to watch over us. Praise God. I want you to lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, that I made it to the last Sunday of this month, I am grateful. That I made it to the last Sunday in the month of July, I am grateful. Not of him who will let, not of him who run above the Lord who showeth mercy. Father, I am grateful. Father, I am grateful. Father, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Father, I am grateful. I am grateful. Thank you for the preservation of my family. Thank you for the preservation of my children. Thank you for the preservation of the life of my parents. Thank you for the preservation of the life of my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. For in Jesus' mightiest name, we have given thanks. Amen. Psalms 124 says, If God, I'm reading from the message translation. If God hadn't been for us all together now peace house sing out if God hadn't been for us when everyone went against us we would have been swallowed alive by their violent anger swept away by the flood of rage Drowned in the torrents, we would have lost our lives in the wild raging water. Verse 6 says, Oh, bless God. Oh, bless be God. He didn't go off and leave us. In the month of July, you are standing because God did not go off on you. Even in your unfaithfulness, even when you, you were in the midst of wrong, you were standing inside wrong like this, God still decided to hold on to you. Praise God. Praise God. You know what God did about for, for, for our sin? He gave you postpaid credit. Just every time you sin, just draw grace. Just draw mercy. He's not going to forgive you for what you did tomorrow. He has he said from the foundation of the earth, before it was laid, he had given Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. 
He gave so much that every time we do make mistakes, he is already there waiting. Praise God. If God is to judge us by the works of our hands, I will not stand here. You will not stand, sir. When you were wrong in the month of July, God said, no, for mercy's sake, this one will not go. I want you to lift up your voices to heaven. He says, I would have mercy upon whom I will have mercy upon. You are no better than those who did not make it to this day. For the mercy I have enjoyed in the month of July, I say thank you. Lift up your voice to heaven. You traveled by road, by air, by sea. You came back ill and healthy. You came back safe and sound. I have enjoyed your mercy in the month of July and I am grateful. I have come to return the glory to you. I have come to return the praise to you. I have come to return all the glory to you. For the mercy that I have enjoyed in the month of July, I am grateful. Father, 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 I am grateful. For in Jesus' mightiest name, we have given thanks. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Today is your day. My God will visit someone today. My God will settle cases today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus. As you comfortably take your seats. Hallelujah. Father, breathe on your word this morning. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Do what only you can do. Father, I submit again before you this morning. And I ask that you take over. Minister to the people. Bless the people. Touch their hearts. In the name of Jesus. Where the word of the Lord is being preached, there is power to heal. 
Holy Spirit, take over. Take over the atmosphere. Take over the hearts of the people. Let them receive the word with the gladness of hearts. And let that word produce results. Even before they live here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Is someone excited to be in the presence of God this morning? Praise God. Praise God. It is your day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, for with joy we shall draw waters from the wells of salvation. Every time you come into the presence of God, come with joy. So that you can draw waters from the wells of salvation. Praise God. So is someone joyful in the house this morning? Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I want to use this opportunity to, first of all, appreciate God who has given me, or thank God who has given me the opportunity again. I'm grateful, Lord, that you have counted me worthy. Lord, thank you. To God's servants, Pastor Femi Ojo, may God continually lift you. May he continually guide you. May he continually strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. To his wife, who is not here, but I believe they're watching online. May God strengthen you. May God keep you. Thank you for being the strength to God's servant. And thank you for all that you do. May God continually keep you in Jesus' name. To all the ministers, to the church, may God bless you. In the name of Jesus. I'd like us to take this song. It's a Yoruba song, but for, for those of us that are not Yoruba, we'll look for the Igbo version and the English version. We'll leave that to choir to sort that out. But it's a very powerful song. I'd like to take this song. Emi orun so kale Ko wa gbe waru Adaba orun so kale Ko wa gbe waru Ojo iboku
Praise God. That song says, Holy Spirit, come upon us. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Release a blessing on us. Let me see you, Lord, before I leave him. Praise God. There's no other great teacher like the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God touches your heart, everything becomes plain to you. Praise God. Holy Spirit, I say, do it again. Do it again in our lives. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open your eyes of understanding this morning. And may He grant you the heart to receive all. In Jesus' name. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The emergence of God's lovers. Praise God. The emergence of God's lovers. We have heard series of messages, revelations, since the beginning of this month. And if you are like me, teachings don't end here. They can't end here. When you return back home in your spare time, you look through the word of God again. What do I need to do? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's servant said, when he was bringing us into an understanding, who are the lovers of God? And he said, those who love their brethren, those who cannot be separated from God no matter what. Those that God knows. He says the God chases. Those who love what God has made provisions for. And appreciate him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And. You know. The, he also talked about the proceeds of the lovers of God. That is you have God to yourself. That is you reign where God reigns. You enjoy what he enjoys. You command on on common exploits. Praise God. And he says the covenant works for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And on the, um, Tuesday, God's servant was bringing us into an understanding, becoming a love of God. What I got from that message on Tuesday was that you're doing well. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may think you're slow, but you're doing well, but you can do more. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit was... As I was asking God more, I said, Lord, I need to love you in the right way. I need to do the right things. I need to not pay the sacrifice of fools. 
and all that. And the question that came to my mind is that can I successfully love God in the way he wants me to on my own? Can I just decide that this is how God wants it? Praise God. Can I decide that, okay, I will do all this. I start to do it. Can I successfully express my love in action, in my deeds? Do I have the capacity as Benga to express my love for God in the way he really wants it? Because there is the will of the Father. Praise God. And I kept asking myself, he says, if, you know, he says, the, how do you love God? Or who are the lovers of God? He says, those who love their brethren. No conditions attached. He says, those who are God's chasers. You chase God with everything, with your spirit, with your body, with your soul. When evangelism is called, you are available. When kingdom things are called, you are available for the kingdom. And I realize sir, that there's a limit to where my flesh can take me. Praise God. There's a limit to where my flesh can transport me. Can I, on my own, do it rightly? Praise God. Can I give God my whole heart the way he wants to receive it? Praise God. Let us open our Bibles quickly to the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 says, 17, verse 7. No, that's not what I'm looking for. The heart is deceitful. Whoever is on the console, the heart is deceitful and above all things and desperately wicked. Praise God. I'll find it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sorry, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. I'm sorry. Thank you. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Yes. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? No one how the Bible says in Proverbs 4, verse 20. It says we should guard our hearts with all diligence. Yes. Why? Because the love... The sacrifices, the issues of life comes from your heart. And this same heart, God, they've said to us, it is desperately wicked. So how can good come out of that heart? I've asked myself that question. Because you see, we all claim to be good. The moment we are faced with one challenge or the other, you start to exhibit something different. You are a crazy giver of God when there's money. But wait to the time there is something you need to do and then you have to give to God. Lord, I can give you everything I own, sir. It's because you have billions. You can give him 100 million. Wait till you have 10,000 and God demands 9,500. Your hearts, your hearts, where the issues of life flow from is desperately wicked. I, I must take care of myself first before I express the love to God. You know, so I started to ask myself, Lord, how can I do this? I want to love you. I want to do all these things. I want to, I want to express my love for you. I just want to go all out for you. So if I will do good, serve God, sacrifice, obey, keep commandments, it flows from my heart. Praise God. When they are asked to do something, sir, if your heart is not in connection with that thing, you won't do it. And this same heart I want to be in connection with, 
The Bible says the heart of man is deceitful. You will even play gimmicks with God. Praise God. You already know what you want to do. Praise God. You already know. I was somewhere yesterday. God, God have mercy. The Holy Spirit told me, oh, you will give offering where you are going. I had cash in my car. I did not take it out. <laughs> I did not take the phone that had the transfer app on it. Offering time. Yes, I can't even look myself. <laughs> my heart is deceitful. I don't know what I go do. I don't make up my mind. But the Holy Spirit did not allow me. Oh, when he was done with me, now go catch me. They don't display. I can't number. <laughs> I typed it out. I'll go and give my offering. Now, what am I saying? The heart of man is desperately wicked. Only God can know it. Praise God. So, as the lovers of God, Becoming God's lovers. Your heart is key, sir. That's where the issues flow from. Praise God. If you will thank God for what he has done, it comes from your heart. If it's not from your heart, then it's not going to God. It's not, we're not talking of belief service here. The lovers of God are God's chasers. You just don't, sir, you just don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to church. No, mm -mm. Your heart must be ready to go. So that when there are oppositions, your heart is telling you, I will not stop. As long as your heart is not going, nothing is going on. At times, if I even go, nothing will happen. You are just here empty. Praise God. But today, God will visit someone. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No, don't be scared. You, are, you, are, you have a good heart. Don't worry. It's just that you need to... Be consciously conscious. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, guard it, protect it against, look, do everything to ensure that your heart beats for God. Why? Because the love for God flows from the heart. Praise God. So I tell you this message, I truly and desperately want to love God. I, I just like me, I truly and desperately want to love God. I truly and desperately want to love God. Against all hopes, I want to love God. I want to follow the dictates of God. I pray for someone here. Your life will please God. Amen. I pray for you again. Your life will be pleasing to God. When the ways of a man pleases God, he says his, even his enemies, they come to congratulate him. His enemies are at peace with him. When your life pleases God, there is no challenge. When you can love God the way he wants you to love him, your enemies will come bowing. That's when you attain the position of God. No one can fight God. Then you sit in the same place God is sitting. You enjoy the same proceeds, everything God is enjoying. Praise God. Hallelujah. I truly and desperately want to love God. It's the last Sunday, I know. But I'm thanking God that this was even revealed to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us open our Bibles. I've got a few scriptures to, to bring to us. Romans 7. I'm reading from the message translation. But I'll be going back and forth. Message translation, the KG, new KGV. Romans 7. I'm reading from verse. It's quite a long read, so I'm going to read through. Please follow me. Romans 7, I'm reading from verse 15. The Bible says, What I don't... What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another. Doing things absolutely despise. 
So if I cannot, if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it is obvious, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more. For if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I can decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Oh, I decide, Lord, I'm coming for evangelism today. Hey, this morning. <laughs> hey, this morning. I agree with you guys here. Yeah? The rain was on point. Nine to about 2.30 to 3. Who will tell me to come for evangelism? I get better duvet. Don't oh, I? Lights. God will not help you. Lights come day. Praise God. I decide to do good, but I find myself not doing these things. I need help. Praise God. Something has gone wrong within me and gets the better of me every time. In verse 21, it says, follow me. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. It, you already know, sir. You, the heart of man is there. You already know what you are going to do. It's, it, is, it has become predictable. No one at the Bible says, flee from every appearance of evil. No man convert you and say, I'll be, I'll get chest. <laughs> Praise God. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commandments, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Part of me covertly rebels. And just when I least expected the take charge, when you, are, when you think, ah, I'm doing well, or I'm doing okay, you will just find that thing, just come. You have been consistent with loving God, trying your part, doing the needful. At the time, <laughs> at the time when you least expect it, it says it takes charge. That is because you're doing it by the flesh. That is because you are doing, you are just, oh Lord, I can serve you. Ah, is it not God? God is not a man. He is a spirit. And those who will worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God in flesh. We are first spirit beings. This flesh is just a cover. It's just to be here on earth. Praise God. I've tried, now verse 24. I've tried everything and nothing helps. I am at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? Verse 25. And this is the good news. The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all my heart and mind. But I'm pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You cannot do it all by yourself. Praise God. There are many times with due respect, I don't feel like coming to church. I'm a pastor, I'm telling you, I don't feel like coming to church. But there is something that says, Benga, don't worry, you'll be fine. Many times my flesh is saying, sit at home. You don't have to go. Just find something. But every time that thing comes up, I tell myself, no, I need your help, Lord. It is easy to give reasons. Huh? It is very easy. But you see what I always tell myself? That three hours, what will I achieve? If I sit back, what will I achieve? In my heart of hearts, the Holy Spirit will be speaking to me. You know you should not be here. 
And he said, the Holy Spirit does not force anyone. He just speaks to you gently. The God's lovers are people who are ready to be helped. I want to do good. I want to follow the commandments as God has said it. If you love me, then you will follow my commandment. But every time I try, I just keep messing up. Every time I start in that relationship and say, no, this cannot continue like this. When I least expect it, I just start to mess up again. I tell myself I'm going to wake up to pray for church. I'm going to tell myself I'm going to fast for everything. Just along the line, just about 12, 30, that hunger just comes. It just feels... <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you, you. <laughs> or someone just calls you out of the blues. Are you ready for lunch? Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Hey. I want to do good, sir. I want to come for evangelism. I want to sacrifice for God. The building project is going on. I want to love God through my sacrifices. But I can't. Something just gets the hold of me. My heart just doesn't connect. But thanks be to God who gave us Jesus, who can and does. Praise God. You cannot love God on your own the way he wants you to, sir. You, you, you can try. You have to take the step of faith. You have to start something. But you cannot sustain it by your mere main self, your flesh. It will fail. It will work out. It will burn out. You will be tired. You will be tired to the point you will think, what am I even doing? You will, if, you, if you serve God with just your flesh and just going in the thing, you would ask yourself one day, what, what, am I okay? What's, what's happening? Praise God. Praise God. The answer, thank God Jesus can and does. And Jesus said in the book of John 14, I truly want, I, I, am, I truly want to love this God. I am desperate, but there's something happening. John 14, verse 15. The message translation. No, give me the KJV. Give me the KJV. John 14, verse 15. It says, If ye love me, keep my command. Verse 16. Hmm. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Can I have the new KJV? I like the way the new KJV puts it. It says, I will give you another helper. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And this helper will not just be around for a while. He says he would abide with you forever. That is to tell you that Jesus knew what he was talking about. You cannot live as a Christian without the Holy Spirit forever. It is not a one day I come to church. The end. You, he has to be there forever. If Jesus knew he was going to be around for just a while, he would have said he would be with you for a while. He says this spirit will be with you forever. So, for you to leave the Holy Spirit out of everything you do as a Christian, you are failing, sir. You will never get the best of it. Why? Because when you are weak, there is something in you that is strong. When the body says, no, I can't love God anymore. I can't do this anymore. I have been serving God all this while. Why is my case not changing? There is something that comes behind you. It's a soft voice. 
He says, son, you're doing okay. Don't worry. And you know when that voice comes many times, your whole problem just, you can't explain how it just fades away. You are in a challenge and a strange situation and you just say, Holy Spirit, help me. And the situation starts to look like it is nothing. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father to send another helper, the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And he will be with you forever. Praise God. What am I saying in essence? I truly and desperately want to love God. But this is not possible without the help of the Holy Spirit. You will only struggle as a believer when you are void of the person of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Go to verse 25 of John 15. Verse 25 of John 15, yes. Praise God. John 15, 25. 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. You see, many times when you come to church and the word of God is going and the word of God is being communicated and you are asking yourself, I don't understand what is happening. It is because you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to walk in you. You have not asked for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He says he will testify of Jesus. We are communicating life, we are communicating the works of Jesus, and you're asking what's going on. It's because there is something not testifying of him in you. Praise God. Without the Holy Spirit, your love for God is limited. Please write that down. Without the Holy Spirit, the love that you have for God is limited. You will never you see, you see a lot of you see a lot of Christians as spiritual fathers. You are asking how they are doing this work, jumping up, down, preaching the gospel. How are these people? Don't they get bored? They will share the same message every day. The Bible says the word of God is new every morning, not to those who just read this. It is those who are led by the Spirit. Because every time you pick up the word of God through the eyes of the Spirit, the Spirit communicates new life. You can. You can read this book, you can read this Bible and see it as a book. And you can see, read this Bible and it communicates power. Praise God. It says, there are still so many things I need to tell you. But you cannot understand them now. It will get to a point in your life, you don't know what to do. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit would come and lead you into all truth. Praise God. Praise God. There will come a time in your life, they will tell you, give everything to God. You'll be asking, how, give everything, how? It takes the Spirit of God, sir, to touch your hearts. The heart which is desperately, like we read first, desperately wicked and deceitful. That Spirit will then say, son, this heart, I take it over. Now I will communicate life. Then you start to understand the true meaning of loving God. So if the spirit of God dwells in you, no man will beg you to love God. No man will beg you to be in church. No man will beg you to do the will of God. It's, it's a conviction. He says the spirit will convince and convert. It will convince you that what you are doing is right. Praise God. Without the Holy Spirit in us, we cannot truly love God the way he wants us to. 
Praise God. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 26. Romans 8 verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Next verse. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Many times you, are, you, you, you tell God, I want to pray the whole of tomorrow evening. Six hours stretch. And you start. In the beginning was the word, the word was the God. And I decree and declare, Lord, this one. After 15 minutes, you go back to picking it up again. In the beginning was the word. By the time you do that, it's second time, you are tired. But when the spirit of God is inside of you, sir, your need for hours, you don't even know you've moved. Lord, as I am going out today, I'm going to evangelize. Lord, fill me with your spirit. We were evangelizing. We were standing. We were not moving. We had finished. We were going. Myself and Minister Bright. Someone walked up to us. Sir. He said, are you people sharing flyer? The person is in church today. That was two weeks ago. We did not communicate to him. The Holy Spirit brought him himself. You can, if you go and evangelize without the Spirit of God, you are on a fruitful effort. You would just shout, talk, as you turn back, they throw your fly away. But when the Spirit of God is involved, the Spirit of God touches the heart of those whom you are speaking to even before you get there. You want to love God? You want to follow God? You want to chase after God without getting tired? You need the help of the Holy Spirit. The scripture I read in Romans 7, it says, I, do, I need help. Ask yourself this very question. This thing you are doing, intensify it five times and continue to do it. Come rain, come sun, come shine for another 20 years. Even you may are thinking of it, you are already breaking down. Nobody's the truth. You want me to be coming to church for 20 years, no break? How will I survive it? No, but really, let's talk to ourselves. Sir, I've gone to church Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the next 100 years of my life. If the spirit is not with me forever, I can't do it. I cannot do it in flesh. The flesh is willing, but the spirit. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The Holy Spirit helps you to love God. When you love God, he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. To keep God's commandments the way he wants you to, at every point in time, it takes the Holy Spirit ministering to you. Praise God. They just call prayer meeting, Monday. Another one, Wednesday. Another one, Friday. Another one, Saturday. You cannot do it in your flesh. You would get weary. So what am I communicating to us? I truly want to serve God. I want to love God from the bottom of my heart. In my department, I don't want to look at what anybody is doing. I don't want to think about what anybody is saying. I just want to serve you, God. I need the Holy Spirit. Praise God. In the book of Psalms 51, verse 9 downwards, after David had messed up, and he had said, Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, please have mercy on me. Soak me in your water and wash me clean. He went back to say in verse 10, please, Lord, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Because everything David was doing, all the, all the things you are seeing David do, it is because there was a force behind him. If you will kill me, God, kill me, but don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Whatever, take the throne, take my throne, but don't take the Holy Spirit. Take 
pastorhood from me, but don't take the spirit from me. Take the wealth, but don't take the spirit from me. Who am I? I cannot be king without a spirit. They are at war. The king is praying. It's not no matter. The enemy is approaching. David is still inquiring from God. God, what do I do? Do I pursue? It takes, it doesn't, it's not a man's idea. It is the Holy Spirit in him who tells him, you must wait to hear from God. The day, it was just one word. One word. One word. God said to me, I will never forget that in Jabi. Through service, you will be great. Your family will be known as great servant of God. That was all I needed. The voice of God through the Holy Spirit. You think I don't come and serve God because I didn't hear? I would have, t- I would have gone out. Most times when I'm tired and I just sit back, there is just something will just, there is just a force. There is just something that will tell you, Benga, you have to go. Don't worry. Ah, but, but God, if I go and I still go back in the evening, ah, that fuel is about 2-5. Hey, but you know God is not too. And God is saying, don't worry. I am the maker of heaven and earth. I can give you everything. Just go. Now, you see, when he speaks to you that way, for you will not even remember you don't have anything. You just move. I truly and desperately want to serve, to love God. But I am saying to you, sir, he says, the Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he said, he will teach you. He will bring you into all truth. When you are getting bored, when you are getting tired of that word that is looking like they are just saying the same thing and same thing, I just go to hear, I hear the same thing. No, sir, it's because the Spirit of God is not renewing it in you every day. John 1.1, 1, 1, for God so loved the world. No, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. If the spirit of God takes you over, you would dwell on that word for the rest of your life. And it will be fresh every morning. Praise God. I pray for someone here. Receive the grace to serve God better. In the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus. I heard people who started the work with God and the burnout. They neglected the office of the Holy Spirit. They started putting in, we want to do programs. They started putting in activity. No, 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 no. No. It can be one hour program. When the Holy Spirit is there, there is power. This is where the word of the Lord is being preached. All you need to do, sir. Just be preaching this word. There is power to heal. It's not your business. The Holy Spirit is there. Sorting cases. As you are right now, the Holy Spirit has gone ahead. Ahead of your tomorrow. Making sure that as you step out of this church, things are working right now. The contracts are being signed right now. The Holy Spirit is compelling someone right now to walk in your favor. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. I'm rounding off now. I want to give an example in the book of Matthew 16 of how the Holy Spirit of, of, you, exp- of you knowing how important the Holy Spirit is in loving God. Praise God. Matthew 16 verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. It says, when Jesus arrived in the villages of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, what are people saying about who the Son of Man is? That is, who are people saying? What are people saying concerning me? Who am I? They replied, some think he is John the Baptist, the baptizer. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah. Or one of the other prophets. Verse 15. He pressed them. And who or how about you? Who do you say I am? Verse 16. Simon Peter said, you are Christ, 
the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus came back. Flesh and blood cannot reveal this. The flesh and blood cannot reveal who Christ is to you. The flesh and blood cannot tell you the best way to serve God. You will burn out. You cannot have an understanding of it. And when you burn out, you will start to look for other activities to entice your fancy. That's what pushes a lot of people to fake prophets. The word of God is yea and amen. The word of God cannot be broken. But when people don't take it with the help of the Holy Spirit, they are waiting for miracles. Just, ah, just lay hands and, and go. The word of God can never fail. Hold on to it. Hold on to this word. It can never fail you, sir. But you see, when they are now looking for, ah, I've been waiting for too long. Forgetting the word of God that says God is the owner of time. He decides when it happens. He knows that if it happens now, it might not be too, it might not be in your favor. He delays certain things so that you can enjoy later. And then you're looking for, ah, they, they said, they told me one prophet will call it forth. He told me one prophet will call it, and you go there, he calls it forth. After five years, you're having issues. And you say, ah, if I'd known, I wouldn't have gotten this thing. No, but that's the truth. It's because people don't believe in the word of God Asking for the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, minister the word to me. Testi Holy Spirit, testify of Christ to me. Teach me how best to know you, how best to love you. Praise God. Now, Peter reviewed this. And, and, and Jesus said, look, Peter, I am sure flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This cannot be. My Father in heaven is the one who revealed it to you. Praise God. And fast forward as you round off to verse chapter 26, Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 34. No, verse 33. Okay, no, it, verse 34. He says, this was the last, they, they all had a supper. And Jesus said, in verse 20, 34, 34, Romans 26, 34. He said to Peter, the same Peter, sir, hold on. The same Peter that said, Jesus, ah, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus was confirming to him that upon, your, upon this understanding, I'll build the church. Because this, Jesus had an understanding that this, something, some, something came down on Peter. There was, Jesus knew that only the Father knows who I am. So for Peter to have known, it had to have been revealed by the Spirit of God. So for you to know the power in the word of God, for you to know how best to love God is by the Spirit. You will want to do something the Holy Spirit will tell you. When Paul and Barnabas are going to preach, the Holy Spirit stopped them from going to a particular place. Say, no, you can't preach there. Why? Because they, they will not receive you. They are not ready. You carry yourself. I'm going to preach. You go there. The dust goes you. <laughs> they start to tell you. And you see, when the Spirit tells you not to go, you go, it will leave you. Yeah. you they will be preaching to you. You will be the one falling for them. <laughs> Praise God. You want to sow a seed. You have, you have made up your mind to go and sow the seed. You want to give the seed and something is reminding you the bills you have to pay. Forgetting the word of God that says, when you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. It takes us mere sense to, to love God who, when God demands from us and says, look, this is what I want. This is what I want. It takes us to a normal sense. We say, ah, Lord, I will do it. You want to be a love of God? You truly and desperately want to be a love of God? Ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, every time I am at a crossroad, Holy Spirit, God said, you, Jesus said, you will send the Holy Spirit to me. Help me. Let me have a better understanding convince me. Holy Spirit, help me. You start to see how it comes. Easy. Praise God. Now, verse 34, he says, Jesus said to him, don't be sure, Jesus said, this very night before the roast, roaster crows up the dawn, you will deny me three times. Peter protested. Even if I had to die with you, 
I would never and ever deny you. All these others, others said this, all the others said the same thing. I'm so in the heart of Jesus. This one was saying that if you see crazy, <laughs> if you see crazy, what I'm going to go through tonight, if you see crazy, you are going to crazy away. <laughs> when Peter saw as they slapped Baba Jesus, he, he said, hey. <laughs> This one, if this, he has, a, he has another time in his mind, will be taking that slap, eh? Because Jesus gets spiritual strength. Maybe Jesus just absorbed the slap. But he know. Say, if this thing touch me. <laughs> and we know the story. One guy just says, Ah, you are with Jesus. Peter said, For when me? How? How? Forget, I know big. You made a vow to you made a vow to God to give him everything you own. Forget a mistake I do that time. <laughs> that one goes. Tuesday service. God is reminding you, you are pledged to serve me. You are pledged to love me. That's the second test of Peter. Kai, if I give this seed, ha, how could take rich house? Baba God, you know it. Back where? <laughs> the third time, the Sunday comes like this. How do I love God? It's through loving my brethren. The brethren don't mess up. He don't verse you as you enter church. And the Holy Spirit says, just go and give him a hug. Ha! Baba God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I will ask for mercy tomorrow morning. <laughs> that was what happened to Peter. He thought he could do it by flesh. He has seen Jesus display. He has seen power. And he said, ah, we are with Jesus now. We are with Jesus. Anything. Because at the back of his mind, he was thinking it's not possible. You will come and hold Jesus. You will kill him. How? This one where they walk on water. This is also they tell Storm, Storm, stop now. Where are you? He was there when he was when he raised Lazarus. Lazarus was there for four days. And Jesus raised Lazarus come forth. The same Peter was thinking, you know, Baba God, no possible. I don't think he kill you. <laughs> so, it, they, they cannot touch you. That's the way some Christians are. The enemy cannot touch me. Ah, when the enemy comes, he flogs you and fright. You go to the wall, Lord, no weapon for negation my father. You grab it, why? He said, oh. You already thinking, ah, come on, what's happening here? But by the time you engage the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, it says when the enemy comes like a proud waters, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against them. Praise God. But fast forward to Acts 2. And God said to them, Jesus said to them, Tarry ye here till I endure with you, with you with power from on high. When the Holy Ghost came on Peter, the same person who was timid, who denied God three times, was the same person who was preaching to them. They locked him up, locked him up, releasing, locked him up. He was saying to them, you people have killed the best thing that ever happened to you. All you sinners. The power came because there was a help of the Holy Spirit. Up to the death, he promised to die with Jesus. He could not die the death until he was empowered. And when they were going to kill Peter, I said, look, I cannot die the same way Christ died. That's, that's rude. Turn me upside down. I cannot be crucified the same way now. Turn me upside down. I will die this death because the Spirit of God was resting upon him then. That's the greatest law. And I then remembered, what manner of love is this that a man should give his life? Jesus was the one who first to pay the price. But by the time the Holy Spirit came upon each and every one, they all did the same thing. They died for Christ. They died for the gospel. Stephen was stoned to death. So the only one that escaped, I think, was John, who was thrown into hot oil. Miraculously, he jumped out. Some were tied to um, horses. They were dragged. It takes the Holy Spirit, sir. That kind of love. Hey! You can't exp you can't flesh. Flesh to... Flesh will take off. <laughs> I 
I truly and desperate want to love God. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, the helper, the comforter, when there is pain from the gospel, when there is long suffering from the gospel, there is a comforter. The Holy Spirit saying, son, it is well. Many times God's servants will sit there and say, thank you, Jesus. But the work of God must continue. Thank you, Jesus. And then he stands up again and says, Bigger, let's go. You think it's normal? And why are they drawing with flesh? And they look say, this man. <laughs> I know I'm not in this with you. Go your way. But when I had the understanding of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit helped me. There are days where you would walk and walk and walk for God. Your fingers would not be able to hold anything anymore. But you say, Holy Spirit, just help me. You say, go and rest. Come back, you're energized. You preach the gospel, people turn you down. You come back next week, Saturday, and say, Lord, these same people, I'm going back to them with the Spirit of God. They see you, they say, ah, okay, where have you been? The same people you saw last week. We are coming tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stand on your feet. I truly and desperately want to love God. But you see, I, I, I cannot do it by my flesh. Mm. Praise God. I truly want to serve God. I want to love him, but I cannot do it by my flesh. Jesus said, I will pray the Father. He will send you a comforter. One who will bring you into all truth. One who will tell you how best to serve God. The Bible says in the book of Luke 11, verse 13. Please, media, can I have it? Or let's take it from verse 11. Luke 11, 11. If a son asks bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him stone? If he asks a fish, will he give, will, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Verse 12. Or if shall ask an egg, Will he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13. If you then, being evil, the heart of men are desperately wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You want to have a better life with God. Hold on. The Holy Spirit does not come on people who are not born again. It comes when you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Then you then ask for the Holy Spirit. You can't, just, you can't, you can't, you can't jump protocol. So if you are here, you want to give your life to Christ. You want to dedicate your life to Christ. I want you to, wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest. And say, Father, I am a sinner. I have gone wrong in many ways. But Lord, I come home this morning and I say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Write my name in the book of life. Jesus, I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe you came to this earth. You died for me, took away my sins. You were killed for my sake and on the third day, you rose. Jesus, accept me into your kingdom. Write my name in the book of life. For in Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I would like you to wait behind after service, see any of the pastors, and they will tell you what next to do. If you are desperate to love God more, you are truly and desperately ready to love God more. It says, ask. Ask. If your earthly father, your father, your own father, ask you for bread will the father give the son stone no sir praise God how much more your heavenly father now every one of us I believe here we are born again so you are in the fold you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son now you are going to ask I have been trying to love you by my flesh 
I have failed. I have not done well. So therefore, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I ask for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice to heaven. It says, if you ask him, he will freely give to you. Holy Spirit, I need you in my life. Holy Spirit, I need more of you in my life. Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. 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 Spirit of the living God. The same way you came on the disciples. Come afresh on me. Come afresh on me. Jesus, send the Holy Spirit upon me this morning. Somebody praise the Lord. Can we stretch our hands?